Welcome back to the Film Arsenal. This is Clint, and today we have another awesome tutorial for you guys. This is using 3ds Max, RealFlow, Krakatoa, and we're going to be creating this uh, shipwreck on the beach using 3D simulated uh, water and waves in RealFlow. And a little intro and backstory to this tutorial. Um, it's actually not me uh, doing this tutorial today, it's my good friend Alam Gur. So I actually hired uh, Alam Gur to create this tutorial um, a couple years ago, back in 2012. And I, I hired him to create this tutorial so actually I can use it uh, on one of my own personal projects. I was creating a tsunami scene and I really didn't know the ins and outs of uh, 3ds Max or RealFlow. So Alam Gur, being the expert that he is, um, basically did this whole tutorial. Uh, recreating a, a shipwreck on the beach. So it really helped me a lot and I basically took the concepts and created like the tsunami scene in the city, waves crashing on the on buildings instead of rocks as in this tutorial. So this tutorial is really helpful if you want to create a tsunami scene or, or, or city flooding or basically anything just to get really familiar and know the ins and outs and workflow of a, a real flow 3ds Max. And especially Krakatoa, because that was the real complicated part for me, which Alamgur, Alamgur explains really in depth here. So this tutorial was just sitting on my hard drive. I figured I'm gonna share this with you guys because um, it helped me a lot. So hopefully it helps you guys a lot as well. So I present to you uh, Alamgur, and he's a really awesome VFX artist. Go ahead and check out his website and YouTube channel and links in the description below. So this is a shout out to you, Alamgur. So thanks so much for creating this. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and you have fun with it. Hi, this is Alamgur Islam and welcome to my tutorial. This is the first part of the tutorial. And in this part, I'm going to show you how to create the environment in 3ds Max and set it up so that we can export this into real for 2012 and start the simulation okay so you can see here this environment consists of a cliff which also acts as a container so that it helps in the simulation process to hold the fluid in real flow 2012 it also has a ship which was textured and the ship was downloaded from the internet you can go to google type ship 3d free model and the first link that comes up just open it it'll have a lot of ships and boats you can download any one of them and use it so to create the environment let's go to standard primitives and create a plane. We'll go to top view, convert this into editable poly, select the vertexes and switch on the soft selection. Now we'll adjust the fall off to something around here and rotate it okay I'll go to the top view go back to the vertex mode with soft selection on we'll create the rough edges of the cliff This is the process that I used. We'll create the rocks in the same way. Next thing, we'll apply a noise modifier. Bring the scale down. Use fractal and crank up the strength. Maybe 
to 5. Okay, fine. Now we'll convert this into a double poly. And go to border. Select the border. So we have all the edges in the border selected. Now we'll go to the edge selection and alt drag so this will deselect the top part so we'll go down go to extrude and and we'll pull it up and then we'll scale the top edge flat just like that okay we have our container ready now you can download the ship place it somewhere here and you are done okay now we'll have to create a mesh which will define the water level we'll select the environment and shift drag a small amount to create a duplicate and will rename this filler and select ok now the filler will select the polygon and select all the polygons go to front view and go down to slice plane let's click on slice plane and it will create a plane with angle snap on you're gonna rotate this and move it down to say this much okay and this will be our sea level okay when you are done click on split and slice so we have the geometry sliced in two halves then we'll go back to polygon and this time we're gonna select the top half and hit delete now we're gonna select the border so it will select all the border edges with the border selected I'll go down to edit borders and cap that's it now we'll select all three meshes the environment the filler and the ship by click dragging it and go to file export and export selected we'll select the file type as real flow sd and select any name you want i'll type shipwreck mesh I have already created one and hit save hey welcome to the second part of my tutorial in this part I'm gonna show you how to import the 3ds max objects that we have created in the last tutorial into real flow and start up the simulation we'll begin with creating a new project and remember you need to have at least 300 gigs of free disk we'll type the name of the project in here and we'll have to choose a location let's go to your drive 
which has the highest amount of free disk space and you can create a new folder name it anything and select it so it will create another folder inside it and it will have the file we'll click on create a new project and that's it okay so manipulating the viewport is very simple just alt left click you can rotate the viewport alt right click you can zoom in zoom out and alt middle click you can pan around okay first we'll have to set up the axis so that we can import the data later into any 3d application so for that we'll have to go to file preferences and under the general tab we have the axis setup and we need to set it to gxy for 3ds max and maya and hit ok then we'll go to import object it will open the objects folder inside the project folder that I have made and inside objects folder you need to have the SD file that I have created in the previous tutorial just copy it from the location you have saved it I have already done it and paste it here so this is it select it and we don't need the camera so we'll select it and hit, hit delete so this is our scene we have the ship we have the filler and the scene in real flow each grid is one meter so this grid over here this small box over here is one square meter so if we compare it to our scene size it is very small and we can do that by going to this little icon over here where it says scale options and we have geometry scale we can increase the scale value to increase the size of the geometry so for reference we'll go to the ship and we know our dough is at least 6 feet high which is almost around 2 meters so this dough needs to be at least 2 grids high so I have I have done some calculations and I have found that a scale value of 8 works fine for this okay this is what we have after scaling up the whole geometry and now we can set up our grid fluid domain we'll go to grid fluid menu and create a domain so it will create a domain box over here we will have to scale this up go to top view we can go to top view by pressing 1 and we can go to side view by pressing 2 and front view by pressing 3 and with 4 we can come back to our perspective view we'll go to top view and scale it to fit our scene We'll hit 0 to go back to smooth shaded mode. So here we have our domain and we need to create two emitters. One which will fill up this mesh and second we'll need an emitter which will create the waves. So for that we'll need to create a cube.
go back to top view we scale this up so we have cube and filler to emit the particles since cube and filler will only be emitting particles we don't need them in the global links because we don't want the cube and the filler to be interacting with other objects and other particles and colliding with them and we'll hit delete now we'll add a gravity daemon for that we'll go to daemons menu and add a gravity okay we'll select the two emitter meshes and under the display option I'll set the visibility to no okay so this has switched off the visibility mode this has become invisible but the meshes are still there and it will still emit the particles so we'll select the filler grid fluid menu I'll select emitter and rotate this we'll create another emitter and for that we'll select the cube go to grid fluid menu and select emitter and we'll have to change the direction we'll have to rotate this yeah and for the time being I'll just put the selection let's put the simulation mode to inactive now we have a grid field emitter and then we can hit the simulate button and we can see in just two frames it has created the whole water level so it saves a lot of time so it creates a very regular and uniform distribution of the particles we can change this by increasing the zeta value to 1 and then we'll reset the simulation and hit simulate so now you can see it creates an uneven irregular ununiformly distributed particles okay so now you have to go to the emitter menu change this simulation status from inactive to active we can also do this by clicking on this green menu which is available in real flow 2012 so we can put it into inactive mode by clicking on this and active mode by clicking on this and also simulation cachet mode by clicking on this so we need to activate for the time being we'll hit on the green button so it will automatically activate the simulation and then we can, we can reset the simulation and so now we'll have we'll change the digital value to 1 and then reset simulate now you can see it creates an uneven flow of particles which falls into the main body of the water and it creates a wave and okay so we have simulated 225 frames and this is what we have okay so it creates a wave at 1 which fades away at around 140 150 
so we'll need to create another wave at 150 so this is how we are going to do it we'll select the emitter emitter 2 go to 0 have a stream of value yes and the initial speed of 3 we we'll limit the particles for 2 3 frames set this at key at 3 and at frame 4 we'll change this to no and right click add key so what this will do is at frame 1 at frame 0 the value is set to yes and till 3 it will remain yes but at 4 the stream is no so it will emit for 3 frames at 4 it will switch off the stream again at frame 150 the stream is no I'll set a key at 51 it will be yes and then I'll add another key and I'll emit the particles for at least 15 frames at key and at frame 166 I'll change this to snow and then add a key so 65 66 is no so I'll hit the resimulate button reset yes and simulate and then I'll get back after the simulation is done so we have simulated 350 frames and this is what we have and then again it's the ship and that's it so and remember we'll be using only from frame 150 we'll be rendering the outputs from frame 50 150 all the way to frame 350 a 200 frame render so before we hit the final simulation we'll have to do a few things first in the export options we'll go to export central we can also access this by hitting the F12 button we'll be exporting the grid fluid domain and inside this we'll also be exporting the Krakatoa file format that is the PRT format also the displacement textures and yeah that's it done okay there is one more thing that I almost forgot was we'll, we'll set up the global links we'll delete the global link and set up the exclusive links right from now on because it will create a lot of problem afterwards so we'll select everything hit delete from the global links and then expand the exclusive links tab by double clicking on this and we will add the grid fluid domain the emitter will click and drag it to the exclusive links will add the emitters the two emitters the ship the sin the gravity into the grid fluid domain 
will also have the gravity, the domain, the ship and the sin in the two emitters. That's it. So now we'll change the resolution to a very high resolution. It will take a lot of time. It will take at least it will take a lot of time. I'll increase the resolution by at least 450 times so we have 450 thousand years the rest will remain the same and Simulating this will take a lot of time, it will take maybe a couple of days. So you can hit the simulate button and then you can go off to work and you let the machine run the simulation for the next two days. And we need to check everything is right before we hit the simulation because or else two days will be a complete waste. So we have our simulation okay now it will not work because we have changed the resolution if you want to see the resolution see the preview you'll have to change the change the resolution back to what it was before okay it will limit the particles at one to three and it will create the first wave it will hit the ship and it will create the second wave at 150 for 15 frames it will create a big wave and it will hit the ship at 250 and that's it so save the file increase the resolution to 5 zeros so that is 4 million and then we can hit the simulation button okay so the simulation is done you can see it has created the ocean it looks pretty good wow And the second splash, the second wave, it's the ship at 270. And then it comes at, so this is it we have done the simulation okay not from 100 I'll play it from 150 and we can create a video preview from playback video preview to see how it looks like so we'll wait and then I'll come back okay so we have completed the preview and this is how it looks you can see
yeah that's fine that's absolutely fine so we have completed our simulation hi and welcome to my third part of this tutorial and in this part I'm gonna show you how to add the secondary emitters that is the splash foam and wet emitters we'll start by creating the splash emitters so we'll start with creating the splash emitters and then we'll create the foam emitters both splash emitter and foam emitter will take a lot of time to simulate and it will also take a lot of disk space and since our scene is very large it will create millions of particles in a single frame so it will possibly use a lot of memory and this will hang up your system and it will crash your system and your software it is also not very memory efficient because it will create at least 3 to 4 GB cache files for each frame and your computer will not be able to handle this so in order to resolve this issue and minimize the memory problem we can use what we have is IDOC what IDOC does is we select the domain and apply a multiple IDOC and we can divide the whole domain into several rows and columns and we can simulate each cell individually so like for example we'll have 3 3 and 3 in x y and g and if we hit ok you can see it creates a lot of small cells and now we can simulate each square at a time and this will be simulating only a smaller area and in this way this is very memory efficient and also it simulates the whole scene very quickly so we will not require so many IDOCs so we will select every one of them from the nodes menu and hit delete we will select the domain go to IDOC select multiple and we'll select 8 in the x direction and hit ok we are going to simulate each IODC at a time and thereby simulating the whole sequence 8 times to create the complete sequence ok so now to add the splash particles we will need to select all the 8 IDOCs go to grid fluid menu and instead of creating splash we will be creating splash per IDOC so what this will do is create 8 numbers of splash particles splash emitters and each of them will be connected to the IDOCs ok so we will select the splash emitters right click on it and create a group and then rename this splash IDOC this is because if you select the group and change any value in this node parameter it will change the value for every splash emitters in the group so this is a very quick way for changing the values in all the elements present inside the group ok so we'll select the group which contains the splash emitters and we'll change the resolution to 30 then we'll change the emission rate to 50 the emission rate determines the number of splash particles in the simulation and if you have 
higher values it will create lots of splash particles but at the same time it will use a lot of render time so 50 is fine for my situation if you want you can increase the value it will create more realistic splash particles but at the same time it will use a lot of time to simulate the whole scene and now we can simulate one IDOC at a time and then simulate the whole sequence so we'll select IDOC 1 192 the first one leave it to active and then select the rest the 7 and make it inactive so in this way it will not simulate the rest of the IDOCs but it will only simulate the first one because this is active since we have already simulated the domain it don't have to re-simulate the whole thing and so we can change the simulation status from active to cache so this will basically use the cache files that was created in the last simulation and it will use to create the secondary splash particles for this simulation we have set the domain to cache we'll hit F12 and under the splash emitters we'll have to export the Krakatoa file format for each one of them we will also have to create a kill volume daemon and scale it so we have created the kill volume so what this will do is it will kill every particle which is outside the box and it will create particles only inside this box before hitting the simulation button we will go to simulate options and I have 25 in the minimum sub step and 50 in the maximum sub step and then select ok and then we can simulate we'll be simulating from frame 100 to 350 so we'll have 100 to 350 we'll select the domain and set the visibility to no under the display so this will lighten up the viewport and it will help in simulating fast to set the exclusive link we'll have to delete everything from the global links and then expand the exclusive links we'll select every splash emitter and drag it into exclusive link then we'll add gravity domain ship filler sorry not the filler volume and scene into each of the splash emitters and inside the fluid domain they have to add all the splash so now we can start the simulation of the secondary particles and we'll hit simulate to start the simulation and once the first IDOC is done we'll select it set it to inactive and then select the second one set it to active and then hit the simulate button so what this will do is it will deactivate the IDOC that we have simulated earlier and it will simulate only the activated IDOC and when this is done we will again deactivate it and activate the third one 
and in this way we'll go on until the last one is activated and simulated so I won't be simulating the splash particles simply because it will take a lot of time and since I have already deleted my original cache files I can't show you the preview of it but I do have the .prt file the Krakatoa file formats so I'll be showing you the file in the render process and when you are done with your simulation of all the eight numbers of IDOC splash you can go to the group select all the emitters and set it into cache mode okay now you can go on creating the foam particles we'll hit 0 to go to the smooth shaded mode but now you can see that even the IDOCs have a shaded mode so we'll select the IDOC and under display visibility I'll set no now I'll go to the grid fluid menu and create the foam it creates only the emitter and nothing else and if you select it under the node parameters will only change the resolution to 50 and leave everything what it is in order to simulate the foam particles very quickly and efficiently what we'll do is we'll save the file in a different name say foam and we'll delete everything from the exclusive link accept the domain accept the grid fluid domain and we'll add the foam particle to the exclusive link and into the grid domain and we'll have the grid domain dragged and dropped into the foam once the exclusive links are set we'll delete the global link and hit F12 to open the export central and under foam grid fit foam will select the Krakatoa file format then hit done then we'll make sure to change the minimum substeps to 15 and the maximum substeps to 30 and select ok and now we are ready to simulate I'll hit the reset button yes and and then we'll hit simulate so when you are done simulating with the foam particles we'll start the simulation of the wet line particles so the wet line emitter is new in 2012 so what the wet line emitter does is it creates the foam particles from the areas in which the geometry and the grid fluid domain collides that is from the edge of the rocks the ship and the cliff and since the geometry is also in contact with the grid fluid domain in here and also here so it will create particles unnecessary particles from all around from the bottom from the ship from the rocks from the side of the container from the cliffs and from everywhere and so to minimize this what we'll do is will delete all these meshes all the polygons and only leave the polygons from where we want to emit the particles so we'll go to 3ds max and we'll select the environment go to polygon and hit delete and from the side view we'll select the base and also hit delete so this is 
what is left with the sin and it will only create the particles where the grid fluid domain comes in contact with this mesh okay now we'll select the mesh select all the mesh and under export export selected and we'll export this as real flow sd say we'll select a different name export i have copied the file and in order to replace the mesh i'll go to import objects and inside the objects folder i'll paste it and then i'll select the waterline mesh and hit open it will display a message stating that it will replace the whole mesh and i'll say yes and this is what i have and this is what i have i have the scene which is combined with the ship in 3ds max before exporting i have the domain which is hidden this is my domain and i have a gravity under exclusive links i have the domain under domain i have gravity and the polygon the mesh now i'll add a wet emitter from the grid fit menu and then i'll drag the wet emitter into the exclusive links and into the grid fit domain we'll also drag the wet emitter into the exclusive link and have the domain and the gravity and the polygon inside the wet emitter we'll select the wet emitter and inside the nodes parameter we'll change the resolution to 50 and then we'll reset yes minimum substeps is 15 and the maximum substeps is 30 and then hit ok and then we are ready to simulate welcome back now that we have finished simulating the splash particles the foam particles and the wetland particles we can begin creating the mesh we will only be creating the mesh for the grid domain and we will use Krakatoa to render the other particles in 3ds max to create the mesh we will open a file and will delete everything except the grid fluid domain I'll hit yes and so we have only the grid fluid domain my grid fluid domain is hidden its visibility is set to no so I'll set back to yes and you can see my grid fluid particles since we are only creating the mesh for the grid fluid domain we don't need anything else and so we, are, we have deleted everything else and this will make the scene a lot lighter and our mesh will be calculated much faster so to calculate the mesh we'll go to show mesh menu and create a grid mesh okay we'll leave everything to what it is and change a few settings we'll go to the node parameter under texture we'll change this from top projection to top projection average velocity and you can use a little bit of filter I'll set it to yes relaxation is 0 0.05 and tension is 0 
and I'll increase the steps to say 24 and that's it we can start simulating the meshes and to calculate the mesh we'll have to hit this button over here which says build meshes we'll click this button and then we'll come back after the meshing process is done so this is what we have after creating the meshes we can scroll it and see how it looks and maybe we will switch off the grid width domain we will switch off the visibility so it will make the scene a bit lighter so there you have it we have created the mesh and now we can export all these items into 3ds max 2011 and we can start with the rendering and the lighting process hello and welcome to my fifth part of this tutorial and in this part we will be working in 3ds max 2011 and we will import the various particle sequences that we have exported from real flow and we will start the render in krakatoa we will start by importing the geometry so for that we will go to file import and we will import the real flow as the mesh hit open okay so we won't be needing the filler so we'll select it and hit delete and we also don't require the boundary the border wall so we'll select the mesh go to modify and select polygons and now we can select the polygons and hit delete Now we'll begin importing the particle sequences and for that we'll need to install Krakatoa for Max and after you install Krakatoa we'll go to the create menu and and under geometry we have Krakatoa we'll go to Krakatoa and we'll click on PRT loader and then we'll click on the viewport and drag to create the loader and it will ask for the particle sequences to add so we'll go into the particle folder inside our real flow project folder and we'll select particle splash 1 if you remember we had 8 numbers of sequences so we will have to add all 8 numbers of sequences into this PRT loader. So we will select one and hit open. So you can see it is added over here. And we will add PRT2, the sequence 2, then 3, splash 3. We will go on adding all of them. Splash 4, 5. So we have all 8 sequences but there is a bit of problem first of all you might think that you have imported only a part of the particles but that's not true because in here the percentage of render is set to 1 if you set this to 100 and wait because there are lots of particles and there so we have the whole particle sequence so when we use 100% of the render we can see that the splash particles has been aligned according to the scene so we'll change this to 0.5 so that our scene our viewport remains very light and manageable and then we'll create another PRT loader we import the foam particles we select the foam and hit open so after creating the PRT loader we'll have to set this all to zero
and it moves to our origin. In the same way, we'll create another PRT loader and this time we'll import the water line 0, 0, and 0. E, and this will be 90. Now that your particles are in position, we can select the particle PRT icons and disable the icon from here. So after importing the splash particle, the foam particle and the wetland particle, we can import the mesh. So to import the mesh, we can go to import in the mesh folder, meshes folder, we'll select the grid mesh sequence and hit open. Okay. So we have imported all the elements from real flow, the mesh and the particles. So we'll now create layers and put the different element into different layers so that we can work faster and render faster and it prevents our computer from getting hanged up. So, so I have already done the layer management and you can do it from the manage layers and as you can see I have created a separate layer for waterline, the splash, scene, foam and mesh. So we'll switch off everything except the scene and the mesh. So now we'll decrease the LOD of the real flow mesh. So we'll select the mesh and under modify we'll go to LOD percentage and type 1 and hit enter. So it will decrease the viewport view of the mesh and this will create a low resolution version of the mesh. It will render the same output and it will be very lighter to manage the viewport. So now we'll hide the layer and we'll begin texturing the scene. We'll delete the unwanted polygons by going to the side view and we'll select the polygons the base of the polygon and then we'll hit delete if you have noticed I have also created a camera and I've also animated the camera so in that way I'll be rendering a sequence from 200 to 350 frame with some motion in the camera. Next we'll go to the perspective view, select the cliff, we'll select the faces of the cliff, we'll open the material editor and apply a new shader. Assign material to the selection and then in diffuse and under diffuse I'll apply a map I'll select on this little icon bitmap and from here I'll select the texture I have this texture to apply on the cliff and open it and then I'll click on this icon to show the map in my viewport We'll have to unwrap this UV so for that I'll go back to face again with the faces selected I'll apply a UVW map so what this will do it is it will create a projection plane from which the, the texture will be projected so next we'll click on this plus sign to expand the UVW mapping and select the gizmo so now we can rotate this gizmo so now we can adjust this by increasing the length and width
okay I think this is it now we'll convert this to editable poly we'll right click on this and convert to editable poly next we'll select the polygons which is not selected that is the base now we'll apply another UBW map and this time it will be projected from the top view and then we'll apply a new material to the polygon and from diffuse bitmap we'll choose something like this which has a seamless edge and can be tiled which can be repeated continuously seamlessly so we'll choose this so this is what we have under after the unwrap so now we'll select the polygon and convert this again into editable poly so we'll set up the material now We'll go to the parent and under maps we have a diffuse color for the cliff and now we'll add a specular color. We'll, we'll click on specular color and on this none we'll apply a bitmap and we have something like this created in Photoshop so that we can apply this into our specular map so in this way what it will do is the areas under white and gray will have specular and the areas under black will have no specular or zero value for the specular so we'll use this and hit open again go back to the parent and now we'll click on bump use a simple normal map downloaded from the internet and we'll use this for the bump we'll also have a displacement working so we'll click on displacement and before that we'll also create a new texture and under diffuse we'll select noise so I'll use turbulence and I'll select a sample type box so that I can view the texture and I'll decrease this value to say 0.5 so now we'll apply this in this placement We'll click on none and from sample slots we'll choose the noise and choose instance and hit ok. So we have applied the noise on the displacement slot and if we go to smooth highlights we can see the specular and we'll change the specular for the cliff also in the rock we'll change the specular value and the same thing for the maps we'll use the bump map instance and we'll also use the displacement and under displacement we'll use the same noise as we have used earlier so we'll select the diffuse color noise map 7 and hit instanced so under displacement we'll use a small amount say 5 and will increase the 
bump to 50 and in the same way for the cliff we'll go back to maps we'll decrease the displacement to 5 and let the bump be 30 so in that way I have finished texturing the scene and now we can start the render and for rendering I'll be using a plugin called SIBL so SIBL stands for smart IBL so it's smart image based lighting you can go to their website at hdrlabs.com SIBL slash index and this is SIBL so you can download the software from here you can go to software and you can download the SIBL GUI this is the main software and you can also download the loader scripts for 3ds max and maya and other 3d applications so these are the SIBL loader scripts so you can download it for the three various 3d applications so after you download the SIBL GUI and install it in your computer you need to download some of the archives that they have you can go to archives these are the various sets that you can download freely and use it in your lighting so the SIBL GUI creates a image based lighting setup for your 3d application and it creates a very realistic environment for lighting in just a matter of clicks so you can download any of these files and use them so we'll start up SIBL and wait for it to load and this is HDR Labs SIBL GUI and you can see there are are some presets which are already loaded into this software you can download this from the website and then add it here you can add the presets by right clicking on this and click add content and then you can select the folders where it has the SIBL presets so you can export this to 3ds max maya soft image and xsi so we'll use maybe the hollywood sign we'll use this because it has a yellowish sky and a blue sky we can preview the background image so this is the background image it has a bluish hue and also a yellowish hue so we'll go to export if you are not into export you can go into the export by just clicking on it and we'll select Hollywood sign and from 3ds max we'll select mantle ray standard and then we'll back to 3ds max we'll go to utilities and then in max scripts under utilities we'll go to SIBL GUI for 3ds max we'll execute loader script okay so this is what we have it has created a environment a ground and a sunlight we can change the direction of the sunlight it also creates a skylight so now we'll go to render setup and from assign renderer we'll check if mental ray is selected and then we'll select camera one we'll lock it and then we'll hit render and then we'll wait for it to render and so this is what we'll have after rendering so this looks pretty decent so we'll add the water surface and then we'll re-render so we'll switch this off save the file 
will change the view to bounding box will change all the views from wireframe to bounding box so in that way our view pool will remain lighter when we'll switch on the fluid mesh and for the fluid mesh we'll set up the material system for the fluid mesh so for the water surface we'll assign a new material we'll hit M to open the material editor we'll select an empty slot and we have two options for the ocean you can create a customized shader for your ocean or else you can go to standard and under mental ray you can either use autodesk water and if you select autodesk water you can choose from swimming pool to generic sea ocean so it will create a nice ocean and you can also choose the color so I'll use a tropical and you can also use a customized color wave height or else you have another option that is you can go to arc and design and you can select a template water so for the time being I'll be using water and we'll apply this on the mesh the real flow mesh we'll select the real flow mesh and apply this on the selection so now if we hit render and wait for the render okay so this is how it looks after the render and it serves our purpose very well and we can change the way it looks in the compositing and make it look way better so if you're worried about this gap over here so it doesn't matter because you'll be adding the foam particles and uh, the wetland particles so it will cover up these areas since this is ready we can render out the sequence and to render a sequence we'll go to the render setup and in the common parameters from single we'll change this to active segment that is from 200 to 350 we can change the output size and I'm rendering a 720p HD resolution we'll click on save file and we can choose a path by clicking on this file and you can see I have already rendered the sequence I can and then you can go and hit render and it will render out the whole sequence so after you are done with rendering geometry you can start rendering Krakatoa particles and then you can go and composite it into Nuke. So to start the rendering in Krakatoa, we'll go to Krakatoa and then we'll click on set Krakatoa as a current renderer and we'll select yes. So after you finished rendering the geometry, we'll start rendering the particles in Krakatoa. So, so as you can see, I have hidden the mesh the fluid mesh and I have switched on the splash particle so now to start the rendering in Krakatoa we'll go to Krakatoa and use this set Krakatoa as a current renderer and then we'll hit yes so this will bring out the primary floater and we can change every setting in Krakatoa from this box we also need to go to preferences and under user interface extensions we need to check on this button and then restart 3ds max okay so we don't have any light in the scene so first of all we need to create for that we'll go to create lights and we'll create a daylight system 
and then with click and drag to create the compass and then it creates a light we'll switch this to manual and we'll move this light and now it will go to render frame window and if we hit render so this is what we have so we have to work out on this to get a soft feeling of the splash so first we'll open up the primary floater and so this is the part where the lighting and the shading of the particles needs to be done so the by changing these values over here we can achieve the look that you want so first we'll change the shadow filter to the nearest which is the best quality and we'll also change the draw filter from bilinear to nearest and then we'll check on this button so that we can customize the settings for render now if you hit render okay so this is what we have nothing much and if you go to the alpha channel this is what you have created in the alpha channel so we'll decrease the light density and increase the exponent we'll have to decrease the exponent to some minus 4 and then re-render and now we'll change the values in the particle density we'll decrease this to 1 and have a density exponent of say minus 5 so we are not yet there but we'll decrease this to minus 9 and then render again so now we can see in the alpha channel so I think this is a bit softer so we'll increase this value to say minus 8 and then we'll hit render ok so this is what we have in the alpha channel so right now we are going to worry about only the alpha channel and then we can use the color later so I think this is a bit too bright so we'll decrease this value and then hit render so now we need to switch on motion blur and on the particle segments so this segment will calculate the number of passes to calculate the motion blur so we'll need three passes to create a good average motion blur so we'll use three and so the value over here tells Krakatoa the time duration it needs to calculate the motion blur so 180 is half of a frame and 360 is full frame so it will if we hit 360 it will calculate the motion blur in one frame and if we hit 180 it will calculate the motion blur for half a frame so we'll hit about 270 and then if we re-render we can see it will be rendering in three passes because we had particle segments three and it will also create the motion blur so we can see over here the it gets the particles are getting blurred and the fast moving particles are getting blurred we can see some blur in this place and also in this place so motion blur is definitely working right now so the next if you notice the splash particles are all over the place so we need to map out the geometry so that we can compose it into nuke so for matting out the geometry so we need to switch on okay we'll go to the camera view and we need to switch on the fluid mesh and the ship and the BG so we need to have all three of the geometries and you can see I have the fluid mesh in low resolution but for Krakatoa to calculate the mat from the real fluid mesh loader we have to switch it back to 100% of the LOD ok so we have the mesh loaded so we'll go to the 
select by name and then we'll select the mesh loader the scene group and the shape and then hit ok to select the three meshes so with the three objects selected we'll go to matte objects expand this and so with the three objects selected we'll click on this create object name selection set so what this will do is it will create a Krakatoa object set and add the three matte objects into it so you, so you can see it has three objects and this number of faces in it so if this button is green it means the matte objects are ok and we can start the render so if this button is red that means something is not working so if we click on this it will open up this list so we can see which are the objects added to the group and if they are renderable objects or not so now if you go to the render frame window keep a copy of this and then re-render and wait for it to complete so okay so we did a little bit of mistake we forgot to switch on enable matte objects so you have to switch on enable matte objects and then we'll hit render so now you can see the difference that the matte objects are cancelling most of the particles which have no use which are into the geometry intersecting with the geometry and it creates the mat so that we can compose this into nuke later so we have a good result in the alpha channel but if you switch back to the RGB channel it doesn't work out in this channel so now so now we'll have to adjust the RGB channel keeping the same value in the alpha channel so for that we'll select the light and under sunlight we'll change this to IES sun and we'll change the skylight into MR sky so now if we hit render okay so the render is done and this is what we get the particles are a bit too much bright and it is illuminated too much so we need to achieve this look so we'll select the light again and we'll decrease the intensity to say 2000 and will not use shadow will switch off the shadow so now we can see it creates a soft bluish color of the splash particles which is pretty close to what we have in the alpha so now we can override we can change the color if we click on this button and We'll choose a color, say something which is, and hit OK. And then if we re-render, OK. So now we are pretty close to the alpha channel. So both my alpha channel and my RGB channel looks almost the same. We can change the exponential density and then hit render to see how it looks in the RGB channel so I think this is a bit too soft so we'll increase this to point minus 7 and then hit render no 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 it's illuminating too much so we'll change this back to minus 8 and maybe we'll increase this to 1 and then we'll hit render so this is what we have and 
I think we'll have to decrease the intensity to 1500 and render again so now you can see the areas over here are getting the proper illumination but the areas over here are not getting illuminated very nicely so we need to add another light so we'll go to the perspective view we'll select the light and shift drag and create an instance hit ok then we'll select the head and move it on this side ok now we'll select the geometry right click on it and under object properties we'll go to advanced lighting and we'll switch off cast shadow and receive illumination so this will render our scene a bit faster so we'll get back to the camera and we'll render it again since we have two numbers of lights in our scene we have to decrease the intensity we'll have 750 each and then hit render okay so we need to change the color a bit I think it's a bit more greenish so we'll use a little bit of blue and hit ok so now to render the sequence we'll go to render setup and use active segment will have the same output value 1280 by 720 and again save the file and this time we'll change it to another location we'll create a new folder and rename this to ocean underscore splash or maybe just splash splash and we'll save a PNG sequence and then we'll hit save so now if we hit render it will render a sequence from 200 to 350 and saving the output and it will save the output in this path in PNG format so we'll hit render and come back after the render is complete so after rendering the splash particles we'll render the foam particles and waterline particles in a single pass so now we'll switch off splash and switch on waterline and foam so we'll be rendering the foam and the waterline together with all the settings the same we can hit render but before doing that we'll have to change this back to single and click on the save file button to uncheck the save file and in camera 1 we'll hit render so there we have it the foam particles looks pretty decent with the same settings we can change the settings if you want so we can experiment a bit by changing these settings okay so maybe we'll increase the motion blur a bit so we'll increase the segments to 4 and motion blur shutter to 400 and then hit render so after the render this is what we have for the foam and the wet line particle so now we'll render out the sequence for foam particles so we'll set this to active segment save file and under files we'll choose another path or make a new folder and change the name from splash to foam and save and then we can hit render 
So after we render out the foam particle sequence, so we have finished rendering the foam particle sequence and the splash particle sequence in Krakatoa. So we have to render one more sequence and which will give the color and the illumination value for the water surface rendered in 3ds max so we'll open real flow and from here we'll open up the file we have last created so after we open our project we'll hit we'll delete everything except the emitters yes we'll hit delete we'll delete everything except the emitters and the domain so we'll change the visibility to yes so we have the domain loaded up so we have only the domain and the emitters in the scene we'll save this file as a different name we can change the file name we'll go to the export central if we hit F12 we'll open up the export central we'll export the create fluid emitter 03 and 04 and expand it and we'll export the Krakatoa particle format that is the PRT format for both these emitters and then hit done it will be saved in this directory that is the scene directory inside particles and it will use the name convention as grid fluid emitter 04 and grid fluid emitter 03 so we'll hit done go to frame 200 and then we can hit simulate and the simulation will be very fast since it will only render out since it will only simulate the particles and it will use all the data from the domain which is already in cache mode so if you hit yes simulate so you can see it simulates a lot faster so after the simulation is done we'll go back to 3ds max so after the simulation is done we'll come back to 3ds max and we'll go to manage layers we'll switch off everything except the shift and the bg then we'll go to krakatoa create a new prt loader and we'll load the sequences that we have just seen so after loading the two emitters in the prt loader we'll go to the modify list and apply a krakatoa channels modifier which is also known as KCM modifier next we'll click on auto update and open up the magma flow editor so we'll use the Krakatoa magma flow editor to color the particles according to the velocity of the particles so the particles which have lower speed lower velocity will be a darker color and the particles having higher speed or higher velocity will have a lighter color so in this way we'll have a variation of colors uh, similar to what we have in real flow so we'll select this in channel the input channel and from the channel name we'll select the velocity we'll type v and we'll use velocity so next we'll click on this input and create a float integer and from arithmetic we'll create a multiply so we'll select this link and hit delete we'll double, double click on this to expand and we'll connect the velocity float to the multiply and integer float to the multiply so next we'll go to input and create two numbers of vector input so it will define the two colors the two extreme colors for the for the high velocity and the low velocity particles 
so we'll go to one so we'll select the first one and change the as color to black and the second one will have the as color as white then we'll go to vector and create a magnitude vector and then we'll connect the multiply with the magnitude vector now we'll use blend from functions we'll use a blend and and connect the two vectors in input 1 and input 2 and in the input blend ratio we'll use the magnitude and then we'll output the blend to the out color and then we'll hit update and now we can close this magma flow editor open up Krakatoa and with the same values as before we'll hit render and we'll get something which is like this so now we'll render out the sequence in the same way we have done before and then we can composite the different passes in Nuke hello and welcome to my last part of this tutorial and in this part we are going to use Nuke to compose the different render passes that we have rendered in the previous tutorial and give the final output okay so I have Nuke opened up and we are going to first import the different render passes we are going to hit R on a keyboard which is the keyboard shortcut for read read node and we are going to browse the render sequences we have four passes to compose with so we'll start by importing the scene we'll check on the sequence button and select the sequence and hit open in the same way we're gonna import the different passes so we have our four render passes if you select the first pass and hit one on a keyboard we can view it on a monitor so we would like to brighten up the whole scene and and so we'll drop a color correction by hitting C and it adds a color correction node to the sequence the read sequence okay so we'll adjust the color correction okay okay I think that should do it will decrease the saturation a bit more okay now we are gonna add a glow we'll hit tab and type glow we'll select glow and hit enter we'll connect the node to the color correction select glow and press 1 so we are going to change the settings I'm going to change the tint first and select uh, orange tone ok now we will increase the brightness and will decrease the size so this is our foam pass we'll use a color correction to brighten the whole foam and desaturate the bright areas so we'll use a color correction by hitting C we'll drop a color correction node and connect it to the read node 
and we'll select color correction hit one and then we'll go on changing the values we'll decrease the saturation to zero and it will kill off all the colors we'll use a little bit of blur to blur out the particles we'll select the color node and hit B to drop a blur node and use a small amount of blur say 1.2 maybe okay and then we'll use a glow I hit tab and we have already selected glow hit enter first we'll decrease the size and the brightness we'll decrease the brightness a bit and tolerance will increase the tolerance to say 0 0.05 and we'll change the tint to a orange color so we'll drop a merge node by hitting M connect A to the glow of the foam and connect B to the scene select the merge and if we hit 1 we'll have this and under operation I'll select plus okay so I might want to readjust the color correction brighten the now I'll add the splash particles we'll, we'll drop a color correction node hit C and we'll brighten it up a bit we'll copy this glow onto C and control B and connect it to the color correction hit 1 ok maybe we'll decrease the yellow tone and we'll drop a merge node connect A to the splash connect B to the foam we would want to reverse this so we'll select it and hit shift X we have our splash particle we'll change the color correction settings and we'll decrease the glow the tint for the glow okay so now we will use the ocean pass to use the luminance map so use the luminance value from this image and we can add it over the final image so for that we will first use a blur to blur out the particles we will select this and hit B to drop a blur node and we'll increase the size okay so 5 so now we'll add a blur sorry so we'll add a merge node we'll hit M to drop a merge connect A to blur and drag it and place it over the connector to insert it so in the merge node we'll change the operation to screen so we can see that it has already created some difference it has brightened up the areas using the color values the luminance values from this layer so now we'll decrease the mix now we'll change the hue of the color so 
so we'll use a hue shift and hit enter and we'll change the hue rotation to make it to give this a bluish tone so we can see the difference So this is it now we can render out the sequence our final output is ready so now we'll use a right a right node connect this to the last node and select the path to save it and we will give it a name output.mov we gonna render an mov sequence and we'll use Sorensen tree and then we'll hit render to start the render and it will ask for the frame range we'll say 200 to 350 which is our sequence okay we'll hit ok and it will start rendering so thank you for watching this tutorial i hope you learned a lot from this tutorial and you can drop by my blog site www.skaialam at blogspot.com and you can come and visit my works you can subscribe to my youtube link at skaialam that's my youtube subscriber name so thank you and have a happy simulating time If you guys like this video go ahead and hit subscribe for more tutorials.